Hello and welcome everyone to the webinar dedicated to fundraising in life sciences. My name is Monica Nair and I'm a co-founder of Ambio Health Tech and today I'm also a moderator of this discussion. But before we proceed, I would like to give stage to Daina Klepone, who is the Managing Director of Enterprise Lithuania. Good afternoon, dear guests, dear panelists. Thank you for this great opportunity to talk about hottest topic as investment into such a hot area as the life sciences, and especially in this extremely hot time when all the world economy is in the hands of this industry representatives. And we are very happy that despite extremely cold winter we haven't seen 15 years already, the sector in Lithuania temperature is raising. There is no shortage of investment opportunities in Lithuania's life science sector. And to give you a quick glance, it consists of around 300 companies and around 80 startups now. So there is no doubt that this sector is one of the top priorities for Lithuania economy and not only because of the double digit constant growth last five years, which was by the way, the fastest sector growth in Europe. Uh, and for small and open economy for Lithu as Lithuania is, it is essential to grow and to keep up top notch talent. In life science area, retaining talent, talents from academia is extremely important, as well as creating a safe and inspiring environment for entrepreneurial ideas. Science and business cooperation gives a spur for innovative ideas and possibly new future businesses. Lithuania is constantly encouraging the emergence of startups in an academic setting. For instance, we have a great example of a worldwide known startup Kazime founded by Professor Virginia Shikshnis and his fellows that developed a new tool in support of a world-class CRISPR-Cas gene editing technology. So many of small biotech companies start out at Sunrise Valley Science and Technology Park or at Vilnius University Life Science Center here. Moreover, universities encourage a science to business innovation model by organizing hackathons or launching entrepreneurship course in a biomedicine, for example, program as University of Health Sciences has recently done. And uh, also growing number of R&D centers supply startups in facilities and resources available for them to work on developing products and growing uh, so, in general, life science sector here is one of the top priority for the Lithuania government, which we are very happy. And uh, Lithuania government set up an ambitious goal for this sector to generate up to 5% of GDP until 2030. It's good that ambitious goals are connected with a commitment and the government plans to inject around 270 million euros into the life sciences ecosystem, AI, fintech industries, funding competence centers, startup accelerators, research areas, and so on. And um, of course, the smart decision was influenced both necessity to reduce uh, COVID-19 impact and uh, of course the, the, having already a strategic insight to transform economy using rising trends favorable for this sector. For the last few years, seven uh, to eight life science companies and startups established in Lithuania every year and uh, they are creating a highest value added companies focusing on digital health, biotechnology and medical devices. So this number for a country with only 2.8 million population is really very high. The investments from Lithuanian and foreign funds into the local startups are growing. As you can see in a graph, most of the Lithuanian investments are received from private funds. Uh, the previous research revealed that uh, life science companies tend to rely heavily on their private capital or EU funding programs. And actually it was a limiting factor. 
However, in recent years, 2019 and 2020, our startups became more active in submitting investment offers to venture capital funds. And situation, situation has changed, which we are very happy. And, uh, but of course, it's only starting now that the venture capital funds have become also more active and uh, are looking at the life science companies uh, here. Uh, only within the past three years, life science startups have received over 4 million euros publicly announced investments from uh, private funds and venture capitalists. Uh, only this year, just in one month, VC funds practical capital has already announced about 1.5 million euro investment into the two life science uh, startups. In order to encourage the development of life sciences startups in Lithuania, we must first of all ensure sustainable funding. Funding is the most important for, for such type of companies and also personal mentoring of professionals from science and uh, businesses. So we are very happy that uh, majority of successful life science startups have taken part in start of master classes during the last four life science uh, Baltic forums, the forums organized by Enterprise Lithuania. This year on September 22nd, 23rd, and to Price Lithuania, we will once more invite innovative companies to take part in startup masterclasses and to gain an opportunity to pitch their ideas in front of investment investors during Life Science Baltic. So I would like to welcome all young entrepreneurs to use this opportunity to expand your knowledge and make new connections and relationships that you couldn't otherwise. We are planning to invite 30 startups from all around the world, and uh, this, is, this is, uh, has changed from the previous uh, events when we were focusing on the, on the Baltic, Baltic region startups. This year, we would like to focus on quality, so we would like to increase a competition among, among the startups because we see a very positive uh, trend in a, in a growing number of, of the startups. As well, we are inviting the venture capital funds to follow the event and maybe even to take part in the international jury, which will evaluate progress of the masterclasses participants. Don't miss a chance because you can be first to, to spot the, the, the biggest talents. You are very much welcome. All the information about uh, this event, Life Science Baltic, you can find out at the Life Science Baltic uh, uh, website and uh, or you can connect uh, our team directly and to talk about, about your opportunities to participate at the master classes as a startup or as a venture capital fund and investor. So, I would like now to wish you a very successful event uh, today and uh, very successful exchange of ideas, fruitful discussions. And of course, we are encouraging and we are waiting for much, much more investment into our talents. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you, Dinah. I would also like to say very warm welcome to the investors, Sara Wallin, uh, Audra Shalal, and Giovanni Rizzo, who will share their insights today. Uh, to all the viewers, uh, you are uh, most welcome to uh, ask questions on the on Facebook platform, and we will address these questions in the question and answer session after our uh, investor panel. Um, now I would also like to introduce you to Ambio Health Tech, who is a new player in the Lithuanian uh, life science ecosystem. Uh, we are a platform and consulting organization that supports life science startups and organizations in their efforts to commercialize their products and ideas. Ambio Health Tech was launched as a response to incredible interest that we have received uh, from the local life science ecosystem players uh, for international expert support and specific in life science expertise uh, to help startups grow and scale. 
um, we actually observed that there is a growing number of uh, life science startups in Lithuania and uh, that research is of very high level. Um, and without a doubt, efforts by governmental agencies uh, in skill building and educational activities, they really add value and the results are visible. Uh, now for the, for the promising innovations and uh, uh, startups to grow further and scale, we believe that uh, very specific life science expertise in uh, life science entrepreneurship is vital. Uh, so the, we we offer we 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 the first is uh, individual consulting to startups um, uh, throughout the life, life cycle of a startup. Uh, for instance, uh, a startup needs help in re uh, navigating the regulatory environment or needs help in uh, reviewing the pitch or uh, in preparing a term sheet. Um, here, MBO Health Tech can help you. And the second type of activity that we uh, that we do is uh, skill building and educational events uh, like today, um, which range from full scale acceleration programs on the on in the vertical of life science, uh, uh, university programs for students, uh, master classes, uh, webinars, seminars. Um, in all these activities, we leverage our international expert network. Um, in our team, Ambio Health Tech team, uh, we have a broad experience in building uh, life science innovation projects and uh, startups abroad. And uh, observing this incredible potential here in Lithuania, um, we set out our mission to contribute to the ecosystem and bring that expertise and our network of investors, entrepreneurs, of experts uh, to Lithuania uh, and to support uh, the startups and organizations. Uh, you can actually read more about, about our activities on our website, ambiohealthtech.com. Uh, and of course, we, we invite you to follow our LinkedIn page. Uh, now I am very, very excited to introduce you to our uh, investors panel. So uh, our, our investors today will represent different uh, funding sources, technology profiles and uh, startup maturity levels. Uh, so first of all, we have Sara Volin, uh, who, who is the CEO of Chalmers Ventures, uh, that is a university incubator in Sweden. Uh, next, we have Audra Shalal, who is the managing director at Boss Consulting and a business angel uh, and a board member of uh, Euro European Business Angels Network. And finally, we have Giovanni Rizzo, who is the venture pa partner at uh, Indaco Venture Partners. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Martin. Uh, now, before thank you. Yeah, uh, before we proceed to the discussion, I would like to ask you, uh, every one of you, to introduce yourself and and your fund and and your activities, and then we proceed to the questions. Yes, maybe Sara, you can start. Yeah. Okay. Thank Hi, you. everybody. Uh, so I I started as a CIO at Chalmers Ventures in December. Uh, and before Shelmish Ventures, I've worked at uh, management C level for over 10 years in the financial sector. Uh, and I've also been at the entrepreneurial side, for example, as a partner in um, an ed tech startup company. Uh, and in addition to my operational CEO assignment, I also have uh, various board assignments, uh, such as uh, uh, deputy ch chairman at uh, the Swedish agency for uh, economic and regional growth, uh, and as a board member at the um, University of Gothenburg. So I'm based in Sweden, and uh, uh, Shalmers Ventures' vision is to be a world leader in creating and developing research and knowledge-based growth tech companies uh, that contribute to a sustainable society. And we invest in uh, innovative Swedish tech startups uh, with a scalable potential uh, on the international mar market and uh, with uh, entrepreneurial teams. Uh, and since 1999, we have evaluated over 4,500 IDs. Uh, we have funded over 600 startups and managed over 30 successful exits. 
Uh, and right now we have 80 companies in our portfolio uh, and we are ranked as number one in Nordics and uh, top 10 uh, university incubators uh, in the world. Uh, and we are actually Sweden's most active uh, tech investor in early stages. Uh, so at Chelmish Ventures, we, we uh, spot great ideas in early stages uh, and guide you to the, to the next step. Uh, and our goal is to uh, get the startups through the first phase and, and nail their uh, business plan. Uh, and for ideas with potential, uh, we offer a variety of entrepreneurial program, programs that develop your business uh, idea to a successful business. Uh, and from start, we make uh, small investments like uh, 10,000 euros uh, in return for small stakes in the company. Uh, and thereby we are securing a long-term partnership and a common goal. Uh, and we can invest up to one and a half million euro uh, in scale up stages. So that's short who I am and uh, Shalmish Ventures, Monica. Thanks a lot, Sara. Um, Audra, can you present yourself now, please? Yes, hello, uh, Audra Shalal, uh, American in Paris, France. Um, I'm the managing director and founder of Boss Consulting, which is a strategic management firm that uh, works with international organizations such as European, European Commission, the United Nations, and the OECD on basically um, advising um, other organizations um, on uh, reinforcing entrepreneurial ecosystems, uh, particularly also um, uh, bringing together different stakeholders uh, within the entre entrepreneurial ecosystem in emerging in, in emerging markets. Um, I go basically full circle in entrepreneurship, where I'm an entrepreneur myself, um, also business angel. Um, always was interested in the supply and demand side in the in the entrepreneurship world. Uh, I also teach at the at uh, different uh, entrepreneurship programs and also manage and have founded a few of them uh, in France and globally. And uh, very involved as a mentor uh, and coach for different um, academic programs and accelerators and incubators uh, that, uh, such as the camp in uh, in um, the uh, the south of France and uh, and also the the EIC accelerator with the European Commission. And I am very involved with the, the business in the business angel community. So um, I had raised awareness from when business angels were hardly existing in Europe. And, uh, and also before business angels were very well known in the Middle East, I had uh, 15 years ago helped uh, raise awareness uh, in those regions. So um, I had helped set up an um, angel network in the Middle East in Bahrain, it's called Temu. It was one of the first in the Middle East. Um, and um, I'm uh, on the board of the Nordic Female Business Angel Network, which is in Hels based in Helsinki, and the European Business Angel Network that's based in uh, Belgium. Uh, also in Paris, France, is the Business Angel des Grandes Écoles that's very uh, focused on uh, high tech. And um, uh, so uh, very active within uh, the uh, considering all the financial players on the on the seed funding um, angel investment side, uh, on the um, uh, business angel investment side is mostly the seed funding um, um, that's uh, pretty much the ticket size of one hundred fifty thousand to six hundred six hundred k, and uh, uh, and my portfolio is uh, very diverse. Uh, even though I'm very involved uh, with um, in the med tech, biotech, uh, health tech, uh, uh, particularly with the European Commission, I'm part of their, uh, the European Commission jury for the European Investment Fund, uh, and uh, involved uh, in the um, in the the different uh, fundings uh, throughout the past uh, couple years uh, in the health sector. Uh, but I do diverse my portfolio in uh, sport tech, also food tech, uh, and um, sometimes, you know, the love at first sight <laughs> that, uh, that I like to diversify in. 
and uh, and as I feel that also an entrepreneurial mindset, it is important also uh, how we balance uh, you, you, that uh, reinforces the entrepreneurial mental side. So I'm very involved in high competitive sports uh, with horse show jumping and uh, and fencing. So I'm glad to be here and looking forward to participate with the panel. Thank you, Audra. That's very really interesting. Uh, and Giovanni, can you present yourself finally? Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be here. You know, it's it's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be to be in this uh, roundtable. So just a little bit about myself. I'm a PhD in molecular oncology. I did. Uh, um, and uh, I did a specialization in microbiology, but my expertise is uh, in drug development. And then I did an MBA in London. And um, in terms of uh, what I did work-wise in my life, um, I, I worked in academia for many years uh, with also top uh, rating publication. And, uh, and then uh, I moved out because I was one of the first doing a spin out from the University of Perugia in Italy. And uh, this spin out actually became a pharmaceutical. It's called the Intercept Pharmaceutical. And I was the head of biology. Um, so in 2012, we did an IPO. In 2014, the company was 10, 10 billion market capitalization. Uh, then I moved to London, always with Intercept. Uh, I started working in the UCL. Um, and in the UCL, we did also, you know, I worked in, in uh, one year I worked in, uh, in a VC firm called uh, Medici, which invests specifically in therapeutics. And I was the vice president of a startup that was in Cambridge. Um, then I moved back to UCL. In UCL, I started working with a startup company from the UCL called, called Yakurit. And at the moment, Yakurit, it's, uh, it's doing an IPO. And uh, we did uh, a deal with the Takeda of uh, 120 uh, about 120 million for uh, a drug in acute and chronic liver failure. Then I moved back to Italy. Uh, I have been the, the innovation director of a pharmaceutical company in Italy called Zambon, the Zeta Cube. Uh, it's a branch of the company doing accelerator uh, programs for startups. So when I did there, I did the, the accelerator was for everything except for drugs. Uh, but then I stayed there for two years. Uh, the accelerator was really successful, not because I'm saying it, uh, but because the Financial Times said that we were in the best 10 accelerator uh, in, uh, in Europe, in the life science. And then I left after two years and I started working with a VC firm in Italy, of which at the moment I'm partner. And we are doing a new biotech fund called the Indaco Biotech Fund. Uh, with a target of 150 million. I start working as a CEO of a portfolio company of Indaco called BioUniversa, uh, which is developing um, an antibody for pancreatic cancer. And we did uh, with this company a partnership with a biotech from uh, California. Uh, and that's where I am. In the meantime, I did also an accelerator, an independent accelerator for startup, uh, which is called the Life Science District. It's quite nice, the, the acronym, because it's LSD. I'm sorry for that, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting now that this molecule is going to be, it's being tested in clinic for some uh, neurological disorders. So I hope we can speed up the innovation by using LSD, LSD meaning, meaning the life science district. So, and that's it. So very happy to be here. Thank you, Giovanni. <laughs> we are very happy that you all are here as well. Uh, now, I think our audience is uh, curious and can't wait for your insights. Um, so we thought to ask you this question as the first thing. So uh, what do you consider an investable startup? And what do you look at when considering an investment opportunity? Yeah, maybe Sara, you would like to share insight first? Yeah. Uh... I think we're looking at, at uh, six different areas. Uh, first, it's the problem disc description, uh, where we want you to describe the problem you solve and, and motiv motivate why the customer should want to pay for your product or service. Uh, 
uh, it's easy, easy uh, to just enter figures and statistics about the problem you want to solve, but just because a problem is common, it doesn't have doesn't uh, have to mean that their willingness uh, to to pay. So we we want to to um, convince us that there is a, a willingness to to pay also. Uh, and second, there's the market. Uh, who is your customer? Uh, and also refer to the correct market because uh, we often see that you're referring to a completely different market, often much larger. And we, we, we see uh, you write like, uh, if only 1% of all Americans become our customers. <laughs> and we want to see who is your really customer and who is willing to pay for this solution. And the third is uh, competition. Uh, show that you know your competitors. Uh, there are all, all maze, all, almost always competitors. Uh, and if we, we quickly find several pieces that you haven't mentioned, we have, may question whether you really know your market. So, um, uh, and it's also easy to, to forget the sub substitutes. Uh, that is how customers solve the problem today. And if there is no comp competitor, in fact, it can be an uh, advantage if there is uh, established competitors. Uh, of course, the fact that they all exist uh, means that there is a willingness to pay. Um, so competition is, is a, you have to, to uh, convince us uh, what's the market, are they willing to pay, who are the competitors, and why are you uni unique, and also go to market strategy, it's the fourth. Uh, show how you intend to reach your customers in a cost-effective way. And this is a very important part of your business building, I think. Uh, are you going to, to call them up one by one uh, and sell? How is your team is the fifth, uh, uh, the fifth uh, area? Uh, does your team also have selling uh, competence? Uh, or how, how, do you, uh, how do you organize your team? to uh, go to your vision and go to market. And the sixth is the goal. Because uh, for us, um, uh, the impact to make a better world is really important. Uh, it's okay to show uh, your network, but in, in that case, uh, put them also in, into different, um, uh, how, how, how do your team and your vision and your goal uh, contribute to achieving the goal and how do, does that uh, make make a better world and I think more and more investors are looking for something that can make money uh, but also how can it uh, make the make it a better world uh, so that's the six areas that we always look at when we look at the to invest in companies and in teams Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Just a small follow-up question. Uh, so you're a university incubator and you invest in very early stage startups that can be even students, yeah, bachelor, yeah. master level. Yeah. Uh, and in the aspect of team, uh, do you provide any extra, let's say, inject some extra team members if you see that the potential is very high? What, what is your practice in this area? Yeah. Yeah, we can really, really start start companies together with uh, uh, scientists, uh, students, uh, and entrepreneurs. So we we see that there has to be a problem as a solve, uh, solve how you solve the problem, but also how do you build a team around the problem? Uh, that's how can you commercialize your um, research. Uh, and we can help, we start about 15 companies a year in at Chalmers Ventures together with scientists and uh, students. And we build, match it with the uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, now, Aldra, uh, you're a business angel, you invest your own money, right? Uh, what do you consider an investable startup and what do you, what do you look at when considering investing? Um, well, first, I always go by my five W's and usually what we always uh, have to have in our elements of a, an elevator pitch, you know, for the, the first one minute pitch. So for me, the five W's is the who, what, where, when, why. So what, what's the idea? You know, who, who's behind the idea? Where, where's the market opportunity? When, when are we going to get to the finishing line and why? 
And why is one of the most important for me is because uh, why also brings in about the passion and about, uh, you know, why is this important to you? So it's part of the storytelling um, that is important. So when talking about uh, an investable company is that, you know, number one, when we say who's behind the team is the, the, the team is very important uh, um, for me because it's uh, the team that's executing it and taking you through the different stages of the company. Um, we usually say like in the horse world, you know, do, do you bet in the jockey or the horse? And most would say the horse. But in the investment world, we we invest in the jockey, and um, and uh, because you can have a really great horse, but then all at the same time, others can have pretty fabulous horses too. So it, your strategy as you're getting towards the finishing line, how do you know how to accelerate that horse and and you know to give it that uh, competitive advantage to get to the finishing line? So that's where it becomes very important uh, the team uh, and uh, and that it's uh, not just a complementary device diverse team, but also the, the advisory board, especially when we're in life sciences at the scientific council. Uh, um, we know with the um, the Elizabeth Holmes from Toronto, that was a big uh, surprise, but not exactly when um, she was able to pitch and have a lot of investment in her company. Uh, but actually, she did not have a lot of scientists on her advisory board. They're mostly politicians, which was already a big red flag. Um, when I when I say where was the market opportunity, it's also the competition is very important. And, and uh, what is interesting that I've seen um, globally in companies that uh, in uh, that I have coached or been on juries uh, uh, is that no matter how much they've been accompanied in accelerators, incubators, or have been coached, most uh, entrepreneurs tend to minimize the importance of competition. And, uh, and uh, that uh, is one of the most important is how are you, why the competition is important is the fact that, you know, how are you positioned? What is your secret sauce? So we want to know how you are different, how you differentiate. And the thing is, too, is that maybe you might not be number one, but you could be a really good number two. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, because you uh, entrepreneurs tend to have, feel that uh, um, tend to sometimes uh, want to minimize a little bit the importance of other uh, competitive uh, competitors uh, uh, in the field. But this uh, one is very important on how you differentiate be between uh, uh, the, other, the other competition, which uh, also helps to know in your strategy how uh, you will be developing and, and, and scaling up. Um, it also is the, the company knowing is the milestones. And it's not only the milestones of what your traction is uh, from when you started your company all the way up to where you are now and where you will be, but it's also the financial milestones that are extremely important. Sometimes uh, entrepreneurs tend to not want to show the, the follow-up financing, what they may need, because they feel that investors could be, a, could, uh, be turned off that uh, that um, there's going to be a lot more investment coming later. But no, this actually shows us vision. It actually shows us also that, you know, okay, this is what you did with the love money. This is what you did with the seed funding. This is what you did with your Series A. Um, later, when you're going into your Series B and C, how will you be using that money? How, um, how are you going to be diversifying your product? How are you going to be developing? Are you going international? Are you moving into different markets? So the... Um, so the, how you're getting to the finishing line um, is very important uh, um, um, for me to see in a, in a company. When these things are clear that um, I know definitely what, uh, um, when we say also like, what is the idea? Okay, you know, is there a good solution? Have you found the, the solution to the problem? And, you know, um, and also we don't want just um, uh, aspirin. We want morphine. We want to know that this is going, this is not temporary, that this is a, a solution that's going to be durable. It's, it's sustainable. And, uh, and when I say also, as part of the five W's, the why and the passion and the storytelling is because also that uh, as uh, the company's developing, there's going to be a lot of highs and there's going to be a lot of lows. And the lows can be really low. I mean, there's a, especially in the life sciences with all the clinical trials, the R&D, uh, et cetera, um, there, 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 can be, um, uh, there can be bottlenecks along the way. 
and uh, and uh, when you can when you have more when you know really like where the origin of uh, what of where this uh, product came and this company and how it developed uh, uh, this also um, helps to uh, to give a, an idea about how um, engaged we know that 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 team can take it to the next uh, to the next phases. Thank you, Audra. It seems that uh, besides all the technical elements, uh, the personal chemistry is also very important to you as you invest in jockeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. Thank you so much. Um, and Giovanni, uh, can you please yeah. share uh, your experience? What, what do you yeah. look at? I think Sarah wants to say something. I can let her, you know, as a Oh, yeah. uh, you know, as a good uh, gentleman, I would let Sarah to just to. No, I, I just, it's, it's just uh, very interesting, the jacket or horse uh, perspe perspective. Uh, and, and I think that's, uh, if you seek an, an investor, you have to, to look at what phase are you in? Uh, do, you, do you need, uh, are you a really early phase? Maybe you need an investor, like an incubator or accelerator, who can, 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 uh, can teach you how to be a, a jockey. Uh, because maybe you got this great horse and you, can, and you need to be taught to be a jockey or you need to be matched with, uh, with a jockey. Yeah, it's a great insight, Sara. Thank you. Yeah. And Giovanni? Yeah, so basically, you know, I know the life science since a long time. So I have been, um, you know, I grew up working in the lab and ending up being an investor. And I know exactly what does it take to develop, a, uh, you know, a startup in the life science. It's a tough life. So, so if you know that... Um, if you are strong enough to break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, if you are uh, strong enough, you know, to, you know, to be lonely, if you are strong enough to raise money, if you are strong enough to be uh, resilient, then, you know, go for it. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense because it's a tough life. And I'm not saying that because I want to discourage the people to do that because the upside, the upside, it's, uh, it's a beautiful uh, environment. It's amazing to develop something for uh, uh, for the people, because, you know, we are talking just to save the life of people, which is amazing. And at the end of the day, also, you know, in terms of salary, now, especially with the coronavirus, become really very attractive. And I'm sorry to say that, but uh, it is like that, you know. Now, if you speak in the street, everybody knows what is a phase two clinical trial or a phase three clinical trial. But before that, nobody knew not even that phase two and phase three were existing in the development of a drug. So there is a lot of uh, awareness out of there, which is very important. Uh, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for, for young guys that they want to start to build something in, in, the, in the life science. So what do we, why I said all, all of this? Because for me, the most important thing is the technology. In the life science, if I find something which is really outstanding, and I know that can solve a huge problem, just to make an example, if you know, we are working in a, an antibody that is uh, trying to solve the, the cancer for the pancreas. Unfortunately, the cancer for, for the pancreas is uh, in five years, it's 90% of the people unfortunately die. So it, the survival rate is only 5%, which is really low. Uh, and it's very difficult to find because in the moment you discover, it's already too late. So there is nothing out of there. So the point is that if you find something that it's a technology, it's very strong technology, and you don't have the team, you know, you don't have the experience and everything, well, we will work to do that. We will manage to find the people to lead that technology. Because what is missing at the moment, I think, it's no money for sure. There are a lot of money worldwide. Uh, just I want to share with you in parentheses, one, uh, you know, I've been uh, talking with the European Investment Fund and the European Investment Bank. And recently during uh, a presentation from uh, one of the responsible of the European Investment Fund, they said in Europe, the, you know, the, the investment that are the best for us, it's in life science, because, you know, 50% of this, uh, of the company that are working life science, they are profitable and they are actually, they are very good. 
you know, and totally the, tw- the all the return on investment for the European Investment Fund, 25% comes from the life science sector. It's one fourth, which is a lot. They also said that um, they want to invest in, in the Baltic countries. I say that, you know, I take my, my responsibility to say that, you know, but they said that Baltic countries are not that major yet because, you know, to do that, you need to have a pipeline of product. You need to have accelerator. Uh, the system in the university should be already, uh, there should be awareness that they can create only you know, product and on, not only to be basic research. But I'm saying this not as something negative. I'm saying this as an opportunity. This is a huge opportunity. Uh, the, you know, when you are in a country that wants to push for the life science, as we heard before uh, during uh, this round table, and you know, at the moment there is uh, willing, but there is not that much, but there is tissue to do that, then it's a huge opportunity. And I think, I think, you know, that's that's really important. So for us, especially for us, we have a fund that is uh, basically investing in company in companies which is between Series A and Series B. Just to translate, it means that the company already did a proof of concept and they are much close to go to the clinical side. So it's a bit more advanced than in the tra- in uh, in the translational. Uh, Phase in the technology transfer, so it's a bit, bit much, uh, you know, ahead in, in, uh, in the development. So Series A and Series B, and clearly, we know that the pharmaceutical company they are looking so much to increase the pipeline of innovative products, uh, because if you want just another number in 2020. 80% of the drugs that have been uh, put on the market, they were coming from biotech. So they were acquired by pharmaceutical and they were acquiring biotech to put the drug on the market, which is, it's really, it's, it's a big number. So, the, uh, and that's, that's, you know, so the technology for me, it's really important. Clearly, the team, uh, it's uh, fundamental because you need to have the people that they can deliver. But sometimes we see presentation where the first slide, we give usually one hour talk, you know, presentation if we want to go really deep in the presentation to startups to present their business. And uh, often there are, you know, startups that they put the first slide. It's an amazing team of 14 people, super knowledge, okay, 20 minutes to talk about the team. But then you go and you discover that they didn't understand what is the real proof of concept. They didn't understand which is actually the real killing experiment that tells you if that drug is going to work or not. So if you can go to the clinic, they don't know anything about the regulatory part. So what, what I want to say is that the team is really important. But know, if you push too much for a team that doesn't know how to develop the drug, then it means the team is not adapted for that. And uh, in those cases, we are looking for new, you know, for new senior people, for CEO, CISO, CEO, that they can join the, the team of the startup and that they can actually, uh, you know, make this, uh, this bridge and trying to navigate the company in a, in a further state. Mm-hmm. So the most important thing for you is the technology and then you can help source the team members uh, that the startup needs, correct? Yeah, you know, in the drug development, uh, there is not that much to talk about the business model because, you know, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the drug development, actually you have two business models, or you license the, the drug or you, or you develop the drug. So there is not that much. So, meaning licensing, meaning or you sell or you license or you develop yourself. So. That's what it is. There is not that much. I can understand that in uh, in digital health is a completely different thing because you know, in the digital health, um, the business model is quite important because you know you need to show somehow that the the customers they need to use your technology. So you to be profitable, you have to have a strong business model. Otherwise, you need to know about the reimbursement if you can get, if you don't, if you cannot get, if it is a business to business, business to customer. There is a lot behind it, uh, but in the drug development, you know, 
other than numbers, there is not that much to play around. But Giovanni, you have experience in both medtech and biotech. Uh, could you please give a, a couple of uh, uh, insights of how different is the fundraising in these two technological profiles? Do they differ? Yeah, so if we go some years back in this field, uh, people were very much concentrated on the medtech. Uh, because the medtech is less uh, capital intensive, they require less money. And the people were thinking that, you know, actually there was a period of time that actually was easier for a, a medical device to go to the market compared to, to, a, to, to, uh, to a drug, to a you know, pharmaceutical product. Now it's not anymore like that because the business model of the pharma has changed. So the pharma is looking product also in very early phase. Now there are the pharma that are doing deals with the universities. They are actually looking just to the IP, to the intellectual property. So what do they have? What, what they have as an intellectual property? And then they take this kind of technology and they develop internally. So which means, you know, the, the exit of a startup, it's much faster in, than the years before. So now you can sell a product in the, in, uh, in the pharmacology, a product also on the proof of concept. There are cases that, you know, companies that, you know, even at the first one, they, they were bought for 1.4, 1.5 billion dollars in the, in the US. Uh, so it has changed the, a bit the, the difference between, uh, you know, medtech and, and biotech. Another point is that uh, when people starting to work on the medical device, they need to understand that, um, it looks very close, the way to go to the market, which can be true. And I'm talking about uh, proper medical device, also as a therapeutics. So we're talking about class two or class three medical device. So, but then at the end of the day, what makes you selling your device is how the doctors, they adapt that technology. This means that you need to go to the market. You need to make traction on that device. You need to show to people that the doctors, they want that device to be used in their hospital. And then perhaps you can have an exit. So having an exit before that time in the med tech, it's quite tough. While now if for the drug development, if you have a very good animal model, if you have a very good proof of concept, and you know, perhaps you can sell the, the, the you know, the, the product. So I think it's changed. Clearly, the numbers of the medtech is completely different from the biotechs. You know, the, the phase two clinical trial from, from, for, for, a, for an, an average drug goes from 20 million to 60 million minimum. So that's minimum, the minimum that you can spend. So it's a lot of money. So it's much more capital intensive and also much more risky clearly, but the upside can be much higher than a medical device. Thank you a lot. Uh, I would like to mention to the audience uh, again that you can ask your questions directly on Facebook uh, and uh, we, we are monitoring and we can ask them to the panel. Um, but, uh, before that, um, I would like to ask uh, again all the investors, um, uh, perhaps um, one of our last questions. Uh, so when do you consider your investment to be successful? How does the success look like? Sara, maybe you would, would like to comment? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, success for us is when the portfolio company's solution contributes to a better world. It scales globally uh, since the market loves the solution and is willing to pay for it. Uh, then we can make an exit and use our profit to invest in the next potential growth company uh, that can contribute to a better world. That's success for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aldra, how about you? Yes, it's uh, pretty much the same for a business angel is that uh, um, the company being able to get that follow-up uh, funding and, and for business angels to be able to get their return on investment in you know, the five to seven years uh, um, for, for, for us, uh, that is, um, that's like a success for us that, uh, that uh, there's been you know, the follow-up rounds of investing and being able to start going scalable. 
Uh, so it's the for a business for most business angels, uh, as we're more in the early stage, is the fact that uh, by getting extra funding to go scalable and start moving in internationally and into other markets, uh, we can see that that the that our initial investment has been and has been successful, and uh, and uh, and that the company is growing and reaching its uh, next uh, milestones. Yeah, thank you, and Giovanni. Do you have an insight? Well, yes. Uh, the question was quite specific uh, because you asked uh, when I consider the investment to be to look good or to look successful, which yeah. is personally myself, I consider it some successful when I see the drug going to the market and help people. So that's that's personally myself. But in terms of investment, clearly, you know, we can consider it, you know, successful when you have a good exit. So when you can... Um, you can make this. Uh, you you know that you can make this technology to be adopted by uh, by hospitals, by pharmaceutical, and uh, you know, and that's that's the most important. Okay, thank you. Um, another question that that we had was, um, let's talk about accountability for money. So after you make the investment, um, how do you keep the founders accountable uh, if if they don't reach the KPIs or the success measures that you have set, do they need to repay the money? What is that relationship? How does that work within your funding vehicles? Yeah, maybe Sarah, you have some comments on this. Uh, yeah, we, we, we are really um, part owners at the company. So, so we work together uh, as an owner. Uh, and uh, so you don't repay the money. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, we all hope for a, a positive exit. <laughs> so uh, that's how we work. We work together uh, as partners, as owners. Uh -huh. Okay. How about you, Alda? Well, that's why we're called business angels is because we know that, you know, most of the money that we invest in, you know, we usually like out of the 10 companies, you know, hopefully one will be a unicorn, you know, we'll probably have three or four that failed, you know, two that break even. Um, the, the thing that's most important, especially for angel investors to understand is, is and sometimes new angel investors don't, is that... Uh, um, number one, we do not manage entrepreneurs, never to manage an entrepreneur. We're there to accompany them and to coach them and help them reach their objectives and their milestones and to help them with their with the strategic vision. But um, at the at the same time is that, you know, we're not here to control the founders. So, you know, we can give uh, strategic advice on how to take it to the next uh, phases. That's why I said, again, why team is so important in the very beginning when investing, you know, in the in the companies to be able to have that trust. But part of it is that there is the you know, the small percent, the risk factor that, you know, you may end up having the team not being able to fulfill specific things. But I do know that like with some of the business angel networks I'm involved with is that if in the, in the seed funding, for example, um, the company really needs a good uh, 1.5 uh, million, but yet uh, that's not really the ticket size for the network. Is that uh, if, uh, as they see that they have pretty much all of the different elements that someone that we would see as a potential uh, successful company, is that uh, we would put it in in trenches, you know, uh, les tranches, uh, where by putting like uh, seven hundred fifty thousand in in the in the first round, and after fulfilling specific milestones, ready to put in the next uh, the the second half. So there's a lot of angel investors that uh, in a way show that, okay, we're ready to put in this uh, size of investment. Uh, when you have reached uh, these specific uh, milestones and you show that traction, then we'll be ready to put that next uh, amount in. So you, uh, you have more and more um, angel investors that are ready to divide the, the investment and to, kind, and, to, and to kind of measure it through the, um, through the uh, the milestones that have been achieved. Thank you. And Giovanni, how about you? Well, same for us. You know, we are always in a, always in a board. Usually, we are in the board of the companies where we invest. So usually, we ask always a seat where we can sit in the board of directors, so we know exactly what is going on. Um, so if they are not accountable, well, we try to 
uh, you know, to organize things in a different way and try to support them. But usually we are not the carabinieri, meaning, you know, the policemen staying on the board and try to, to understand if they are doing well or not in terms of, you know, controlling. But for sure, we want to, we, we do two things. One is that usually we, when we invest, we schedule, we want to see a proper development plan and we allocate the money based on milestones, what Odra was saying before, and which is very important. And at the same time, if, you know, some of the milestones, they were not reached, then we need to try to find that, to figure out how we can solve the problems that are internal to the company. So basically, no control, support, but being always there and, uh, you know, with an eye and, uh, you know, try to be, to pay attention to any minimum, minimum detail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have a question from the audience. Uh, uh, Gleb Maltev is asking, um, thanks for the insights. Uh, I saw Estonia grow its ecosystem from scratch. Uh, what would be your advice to life sciences uh, founders in Lithuania and the rest of the Baltics in terms of validation and fundraising, especially when software as service and fintech investments dominate the region and they are perceived as be less risky and complex? Maybe Giovanni, you can keep commenting on that. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful question, and actually, you know, it takes uh, it takes something that I I like very much from my intestine because you know it's something I'm very passionate about as an Italian, you know, you can imagine. So uh, the point is that that that's exactly the reason why. So you know, if there is something that is really attracting me in the last ten years, it's the artificial intelligence to develop a new molecule. So a lot of people they talk about digital health which is fine, it's amazing, it's unbelievable. But because I come from the drug development side, then I see that recently there is a lot going on in identifying new molecules by using the digital tools. So you actually, there are some modules that are trying to avoid for the clinical trial to be done, clinical meaning preclinical trial on the animal models. So you can do on cells, you can predict if a molecule it's safe, it has uh, you know cardio cardiotoxicity, whatever, just using models, and this is amazing, you know. So also you can use the artificial intelligence to see how one molecule is going to distribute in the space. So you can screen the molecule, hundreds of millions of molecules, and try to identify the right molecule that fits the best with your target. So there is a lot behind these, uh, you know, the, the digital uh, and the, the life science sector. So excluding the digital health, which is super hot, and I think in a country where there is a lot of fintech and digital skills, I think that the, the connection between life science and those people can be really booming. Uh, just to give you an example, in our accelerator, which is a biotech accelerator, we are doing a deal with a company that is doing only digital. That's because we want to follow, we want to go for that route. So in a country which is really top level in, uh, in fintech, in digital, I think it, it can be really smart to move on the life science. Yeah, I, I think the question is uh, related to... Um, that, that uh, there is a lot of funding and a lot of governmental attention, a lot of industry attention to fintech, and then how to boom, boost the life science yeah. industry along mm. with that, uh, yes. And yeah, if I can just, just say something, and I will let Sarah then uh, talk, but just a little bit, you know, it's, as I said before, you know, I was in the European Investment Fund, and they actually were saying, we want to invest in, in both in countries in the life science sector. But unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like we are unable to do that. So I don't think the problem will be, of course, you know, it takes for the government to support in terms of the institutions, they need to support the local university to create a benchmark uh, innovative uh, research, which is very strong. And then on that benchmark, you build the innovation that is creating product. It's, it's a process, it takes time. But I don't see that someone should just be saying, you know, well, on the other side, I have much more. And here, it's much more difficult. Thank you, Giovanni. Sara, yes, please. 
Yes, I, I think also uh, regarding fundraising, uh, it's a numbers game. So only using personal networks and staying regional uh, is a common mistake I see since Sweden also are a small country uh, and you need to find as many investors as you can uh, who are fit for your sector and, and the stage of your company. Uh, and the only way to do this is to aggregate a list of, of global investors uh, who are a potential fit for your firm and, and canvas them through emails and phone and um, and also identifying potential investors is no small task uh, with investors moving in and out of the space and, and with, uh, with uh, many investors maintaining a very low profile, this step can take a considerable amount of time as well. Uh, I know that's, that since I've, I've been on the entrepreneurial side myself, um, you can use a number of methods to, to identify investors, including previous financial rounds, conference attendee list, news feed, uh, networking events like this one, um, and uh, uh, you, sh you can, can look for investors who have historically invested in companies similar to yours. Um, so I, I think you have to, to uh, know that it takes time and you have to see, see uh, the funding as a selling, uh, selling uh, task. And you have to, to, uh, to um, put resources to the funding. Mm. Thank you for valuable insights, Sara. Uh, Audra, do you have any insights? This is a, the mm -hmm. last question. <laughs> yes, um, I would say that what's very important is plugging yourself within the ecosystem, but, but especially that when you're saying like, oh, okay, Estonia is very focused on, you know, fintech and, and digital and et cetera, is that, uh, you know, where do we find our, you know, niche? is that um, there are, uh, by doing a lot of research, you know, a lot of what, you know, Sarah was uh, mentioning on um, the different ecosystems from around in the Nordics and, and the Baltics, is really plugging yourself within ecosystems. Also, like, for example, Tech Tour, um, uh, they have, like, um, the um, sector-specific um, uh, accompaniment and coaching and, and, and matchmaking and putting them together with VCs and all. And the thing that's interesting there is that um, I know that when I was on the, um, on the digital health and med tech, taking part in the jury and the coaching and all, um, there were some entrepreneurs that I had seen um, at one event. And then it was like six months later, I had seen them again. And, uh, and I said, so how is the company growing? How, how is it going? And by hearing them pitching from the six months later, it's, it was interesting to see that actually uh, the coaching they had uh, six months earlier and what they did with some, um, with some investing and what they're doing now is um, that actually for um, investors for follow-up actually gives the credibility of, hey, we remember seeing this, uh, the, the, these companies uh, at uh, these specific events and actually, um, they've actually uh, have more traction and actually have achieved some um, of the milestones that uh, they, they wanted to accomplish in between. And that uh, um, are very interested in um, actually now with uh, uh, the type of investor that we are to, to, um, to look into and in investing um, uh, in the near future. And so this is where it's important that sometimes you, you entrepreneurs or startups can feel that they're kind of uh, getting lost within the jungle of all these different events and conferences. And, you know, even now with COVID, you know, a lot of uh, webinars and things, but actually it's um, how do you streamline, you know, how do you like um, plug yourself into specific uh, you know, ecosystems within the international, because um, in the investors world is actually very small and, uh, and particularly the business angels. And it's like, as me on the board of the European Business Angel Network, I know uh, I have a lot of colleagues, you know, with Estonian angels, uh, with uh, the, um, the uh, French angels and, and the different, uh, and, and in Portugal. So what's interesting also is that you, um, uh, by knowing, uh, for example, like in Lithuania, a few of your angel networks coming from Lithuanian business angels, when you're looking at follow-up, is that Lithuanian business angel network, which is also like a member of, uh, of the European business angel network, when they are looking for follow-up and scale up is that we're very, because it's all about trust, we're very interconnected. 
And, uh, and, uh, and so when there needs to be that follow up, we know the other angel investors from around and, uh, and we get kind of like the, the, um, how would you say the, the vouch uh, of saying, Hey, we endorse this company because we invested in the, in the seed round. What do you think of the follow up uh, to help this company go scalable? So it's really um, about uh, um, really plugging yourself in. You know, it's kind of what Ambio is uh, with their uh, platform of uh, bringing together more stakeholders within the ecosystem that's uh, needed in Lithuania. You know, this is exactly the type of uh, things that you need to plug yourself into to help you um, and accompany you along the way. Thank you, Audra. Thank you for your insight. Um, we have more questions from the audience. Uh, however, we are out. Of, uh, we have we are approaching the end of the webinar um, from the fundraising point of view. Uh, so uh, we would like to ask uh, the participants, to, the audience, to uh, send us questions to our email address, and we will answer them uh, personally. Uh, it's uh, ambiohealthtech.com. Uh, you'll find our email there. Uh, so very, very thank you for uh, for your insights, Sara, Audra, and Giovanni. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, you you in the audience uh, who are viewing us, um, you, you got some good insights for your business. Um, and um, from our side, that this is it. And uh, this uh, webinar will be followed by um, EIT Health uh, representative, uh, Tamas Bakasi, uh, who will present the programs and funding opportunities for life science startups in uh, European um, landscape. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, Monica. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Bye Monica. Bye. 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 Bye, Audra. Bye, Giovanni. Ciao, ciao. Ci vediamo. Ciao, Audra. Ci vediamo. <laughs> I'm trying to reach you many times, Audra. So, really? Yes, I did. But now, anyway. I think we're online, aren't we? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> we're online. Okay. Okay. I'll send you my contact information. I think you might That's not have perfect. the right one. I'm already in touch with Sara, so everything is okay. fine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you very much. Bye. It's a nice. Bye. It's a nice. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, hello everyone. I hope you can see me and hear me. I'm just sharing my screen with you. And yeah, I hope that this can be also seen by you. So welcome everyone. I'm Tomasz Bikas, representing EIT Health, uh, Central Eastern and Southern European Accelerator programs. Whenever I'm saying that this is this is the region I'm representing, of course, it does not mean that the programs I will uh, present to you are just accessible from these regions. But my job in EIT Health uh, uh, that uh, I'm bringing up uh, the less developed regions from innovation performance point of view, and of course, I'm uh, helping startups to get from point A to point B. Uh, so usually I'm working with early stage startups, but sometimes of course I'm working with scale ups and scale outs. Uh, it's up to you that what the need is pointing out. Uh, in general, what I can say that EIT Health, you will see also in my slides, just a quick introduction, who does not know who is EIT Health or what we are doing. EIT Health is a European Innovation uh, and Technology Institute, the health related branch. Uh, so we are supporting any type of innovation which is concentrating on healthcare. So digital health, medtech, biotech, everything is in the packet. And our only key PI, let's say, or our only goal uh, is to make European innovation better. Uh, at the end of the day, of course, Europe would like to compete with other uh, parts of the globe, uh, like the US, Asia. Uh, and most probably, you know, that from innovation performance point of view, we are pretty much at the same level now uh, where the US is, but still we are competing with Asia, of course, with US still, but we can say that we reached the level of the US and now uh, we are facing with the new challenges whenever we are talking about, for instance, Asia or we are talking about Israel. So many differences, many type of, uh, let's say, budgeting and uh, social cultural uh, differences can be pointed out. Uh, but the most important uh, point here is that our institute it has been uh, dedicated to uh, reach out innovators, 
uh, try to help them and from the really early stage uh, to the final stage of their journey. Uh, and of course, uh, make different type of support uh, wherever it's needed. Uh, again, it's important to mention here that we are supporting startups and innovators from the very, very early stage. You will see it on my slide that I brought you uh, today five programs from our portfolio, which is actually in total 16 different programs. So I will uh, talk about later on that if you need any further information, how can you reach me out? Uh, and of course, at the end of the presentation, I would like to give you some time for your instant questions. But again, whenever you need me or you need some answers about our portfolio or our programs, please reach me out. I'm more than happy to answer for your questions. So let's hit in the middle. Just a quick overview of EIP Health. Uh, we are standing in three different pillars. Uh, the campus, the accelerator, and the innovation projects. I wouldn't like to steal too much time from uh, your life. Campus is education, of course. So we are supporting different type of education programs all over Europe, which is connected to healthcare uh, studies. We are uh, funding different type of MBA and different type of postgrad uh, education, as well as single trainings for uh, for citizens and uh, and of course researchers and healthcare professionals. Uh, you will see big numbers later on. Uh, we are contributing. Uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, professionals from the training and uh, education point of view. Accelerator, I just mentioned you. So this is where we are uh, working uh, with startups and supporting startups and innovation projects. So this is the big fish uh, in the pocket. We are supporting different type of big uh, corporate projects as well as consortium related projects. And it's important to mention here that whenever we are talking about innovation projects, half a million, one million euros, etc., uh, we are also talking about the role of startups because from the accelerator pillar we try to push as many uh, startups as possible uh, to become a part of a big consortium so like uh, you know um, uh, Moving together with GE Healthcare, for instance, or uh, and or the or University of Oxford. First of all, it's a great uh, uh, pride, and the other part, of course, it's a big opportunity uh, for a startup. So this is what we try to also formulate within the consortiums and give more opportunities for startups. This is our geographical coverage. I don't need to highlight, I believe, too much things here. As you can see, we are everywhere in Europe uh, in different type of uh, operations. Uh, our main HQ is in Munich in Germany, but our region, so I don't want to go into details because most probably I will burn your processes because it's too, objectively it's too complicated. Uh, so we are uh, working in a matrix organization and our region is called Innostars. This is the Central Eastern and Southern European region. Uh, and our regional HQ is in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, so this is pretty much where we are. Uh, this is just the first numbers coming from our first three years operation between 2016 and 2018, as you can see, we supported more than 400 startups. Uh, we invest, uh, we attracted more than 90 million euros in uh, investment. This will be important to, to highlight what is our relation with investors and investments in general. I will talk you uh, talk about uh, later on. And as you can see, more than 35 products and service has been launched with our help. Uh, more than 11,000 professionals has been trained by our support, and more than 10,000 graduates has been trained uh, as part of EI health supported programs. Uh, and most probably the most important uh, uh, point here uh, for you is how can we help you? So what type of supports we can give you? The so first of all, access to knowledge. Uh, of course, this is applicable for all type of maturity levels coming from the early stage to the scale. But of course, we are having different type of uh, training structures up onto the maturity level. In general, what we can uh, provide you here, uh, boot camps, different type of local, and of course, right now, online trainings. We do have our own instrument, which is Mentor and Coaching Network. It's called MCM, which consists of more than 600 different mentors, which has been qualified by EIT Health. So we are filtering, of course, we there is an, the proper application process, we are selecting the mentors and those mentors are available uh, for our startups. And in different type of uh, programs, we are giving you money, you can hire the mentors and you can work with those mentors. These mentors are representing the totally wide scale of professional professions. So you can hire healthcare professionals, you can hire business professionals for marketing, sales, legal, accounting, uh, different type of market specialists if you want to expand your operation from one location to another. So actually, I cannot really tell you that 
there is there is a profession missing from our portfolio in MCN. So this is this is one of the most powerful assets we have from the knowledge point of view. Then access to stakeholders. So whenever EIT House is is talking about uh, the value of our network, fortunately. I'm sorry to use this word, but the fortunate thing is that we are not bullshitting. So we have a really rich network, more than 150 uh, big, uh, corporates, universities, the most important uh, uni uh, healthcare universities in Europe are part of our network. So those guys like GA Healthcare, Siemens, Bayer, Roche, etc., they are part of our network. And definitely whenever we are organizing networking events, matchmaking events, different type uh, of, uh, of linkage, uh, let's say events, we are inviting these representatives. We have special programs wherever, for instance, pharmaceutical companies are representing themselves. We are creating together uh, with them challenges where startups can fit into and they start to work with them. So we definitely try to utilize our network for your purposes. And we try to link uh, parties in the ecosystem so this is the access to stakeholders, but I would like to uh, also link here the investors because I will talk about later on that what are our own investment uh, uh, opportunities, but uh, it's important that most probably it's more valuable and more powerful what we are doing with our external network, let's say. So we have a really wide uh, network of uh, external, let's say, external investors. So individual investors, groups, uh, angel investors, etc. And of course, these are these are informal uh, connections. But whenever we are organizing networking events, and we do organize networking events really frequently, even though we are now living in an online world, we just have uh, the plan for 2020. Uh, just in our region, 21 networking events upcoming to the, to the next month. Uh, so actually, we are inviting uh, these investors and we try to give them the opportunity uh, to be introduced towards our startups and startups are introduced towards our, to the investors. And many, many success stories have been born this way. So this is what we experience. It's one of the most valuable, let's say, opportunity we can also give you. Access to markets. So here, Again, networking and matchmaking. Of course, whenever I'm saying you can have really nice uh, uh, relations and, and different type of opportunities with our partners, with our investors, of course, we do have the opportunity also to introduce you to future customers because many healthcare providers in our network are looking for new service providers. And if you are looking for B2B opportunities, then definitely uh, this can help you. But whenever we are also talking about access to market, it's not just about the relations or the network, but of course, like validation, clinical trials, we do have our own network of uh, testing beds and uh, and uh, and let's say clinical trial institutes. So whenever you can do your clinical trials or preclinical trials, so we do have the infrastructures through our network. So this can be also a really helpful thing for you. And of course, you can save a lot of time, a lot of energy, and most importantly, uh, most uh, a really huge amount of money. Uh, and access to finance. So we, again, so I mentioned to you that we have a really wide uh, uh, network of informal connections with investors, but we do have our own investor network within EIT House, uh, managed by ASQS, one of the French uh, financial institutes. Uh, you need to imagine like an umbrella organization. So we do maintain uh, the uh, the umbrella organization with uh, with the investor network, but uh, behind the umbrella there are hundreds of uh, private investors. And whenever we are qualifying a startup to to access to investor network, those hundreds of investors can look into the details. And whenever one of them is interested in your project, then negotiation a proper negotiation can be started. So this is pretty much how investor network works. We also have crowdfunding funds. Platform. And just recently, we started a new fund, which is called VCOE. It's, uh, it's a common uh, investment platform and fund uh, coming from EIT Health and the European Inve in uh, Investment Bank. So it's a common project together with European Investment Bank. Uh, so we are enlarging our investment capabilities, but you need to understand that EIT Health uh, prior uh, or primary uh, uh, profile is not an investor. So we are not VC, we will not become a VC. 
because we are a non-profit organization under the European Commission. So our duty and our mission is to help you however we can. And actually in most of the fields we can, but at the end of the day, we are not interested in become, let's say a business winner of your project. Therefore, it's a really, really nice organic cooperation with this is what we have because we are not competing with each other. So uh, definitely it's another profile and everybody has its own role in the ecosystem, but together with VCs, together with other ecosystem players, we can give you and grant you a really a nice and powerful support. And this is pretty much what we have as an EIT health startup journey. So it's important that we are not offering just one or another program, but we are entirely offering a journey. Of course, the journey consists of yearly programs. So every year you can uh, be part of a program, but if you felt it was successful, if you felt like it was, it was nice to be there. And actually we have really nice experience with this because many, many alumni are coming back year by year to our programs, but it does not mean that our journey is your journey. So it should be imagined that you have your own journey, but whenever your and our journey is matching at a certain point, we can help you. So this is, this is how this journey should be considered. Um, and I just want to uh, talk about five programs today. I will be quick. I, uh, I try to be as effective as possible. But again, guys, uh, at the end of my presentation, if you have any instant questions, please let me know. Uh, and I'm more than happy to, to answer for it. So first, Jumpstarter, this is really the point zero. So this is a program for ideation phase startups, meaning that if you have a small team, two or three guys, with an idea, that's enough. No other things is required. So you don't need to have a registered company. You do not have uh, you do not have revenue or market presence. Just the idea and a small group of people around you. If you are, and of course, the willing to become a startup uh, and willing to become a company. Uh, if you are interested in this way, then uh, Jumpstarter could be a great opportunity because in this program, uh, the training modules is actually teaching you how to make business from your idea. So the whole uh, program, which is award winner actually in the European uh, era, uh, actually uh, is focusing on uh, the basic business knowledge, the basic business essentials, and also pitching techniques. And whenever we have the bootcamp series, you will have local trainings in your own countries. Of course, now everything is online, but hopefully like in 2020, one uh, at the second part, or maybe 2022, we'll get back to normal life, and then uh, you can be part personally in these local trainings. Besides that, there is a grand final pitching contest at the end of the uh, end of the program, where of course, again, original and, and typical uh, pitching contest in front of a jury. And the most convincing startup is receiving 10,000 euro prize. It's non-reportable price, so you don't need to report it back to us. You don't need to give any type of shares or equities. It's important, actually. I need to highlight here that whenever I'm talking about money, how much money we will give you in a program, it's meaning that you don't need to give any type of share or equities to us. So it's a, let's say, free money, let's go this way. It sounds a little bit weird, but uh, you know what I mean. So you don't need to give any type of percentage from your company. Whenever I'm talking about money, we will give you in a certain program. Uh, right now, this program just started uh, the application phase. So if you are interested in this program or if you are interested in more details, first of all, you can contact me. You will see my contact details at the end of the presentation, but also you can contact my colleague Dora Maroshvani at this uh, uh, email address. I already sent uh, this presentation to Auguste, so you will receive it. Uh, whenever you want to contact my colleague, please do it. Uh, it's important that the application deadline is 16th of March, so from now now you pretty much have a month to apply. I need to say guys that application is really, really easy in our case. So you need to fill out an online form. You need to imagine like a one or two A4 page in online way. Most of this content already available in your pocket. You just need to customize it up onto the application, uh, let's say uh, needs. Uh, but it's not frightening. It's not a typical EU project where you need to create like 40 pages. It's 2A4 maximum in an online form. So that's, that's the application. The next step uh, in the journey, in the Stars Awards. So this is for startups who already, startups, I need to highlight here. So already registered companies, startups uh, with MVPs or prototypes. So this is the eligibility criteria you need to hit. Uh, we just recently uh, extended 
the geographical coverage in case of Innostas. Uh, so this is not being indicated here, but we just extend it to Spain and also to the West Balkan countries. Uh, so these are the countries who will join us this year. Uh, but other than that, uh, you need to have a registered company uh, or ongoing registration for your company. This is also eligible. Uh, and you need to have an MVP or a prototype uh, from your product or service. Uh, the program is offering 25,000 euros for 15 selected teams. So we are selecting 15 teams and giving 25,000 euros for each and every team. From the 50 to 25,000 euros, you can spend 19,000 on project development. Everything counts, which can be uh, justified that it can help you to go forward with your project. The only, uh, let's say, uh, uh, thing you need to do here uh, is actually create a project plan. You need to do it in advance. You need to clarify it for us. If how would you like to spend the 19,000 euros? Of course, this can be changed during the year if you have new priorities and if you want to do uh, the spending in a little bit different way. That's not a problem. Uh, so the only, uh, let's say, uh, thing you need to do uh, is to create the project plan. Besides the 19,000 euros, there is 6,000 for mentoring. I just mentioned at the beginning that we have Mentor and Coaching Network, MCM. Uh, so you can spend the 6,000 here. You can select whoever you want to work with. You can select one, two, or maybe three mentors. You can work with those guys and you can, you can pay their bills. That's the 6,000 euros. Uh, besides the 25,000 euros, you will receive a bootcamp series. Here, there are four main topics we are concentrating on. One is the advanced pitching techniques. Definitely, you are more mature, so you need to have more advanced pitching techniques in, in, uh, in order to convince investors, partners, or future customers. So pitching uh, from the advanced point of view. Uh, then we have European regulations. We have investment strategy. Uh, and also, uh, we do have the business modeling, let's say, advanced part. So of course, for now, whenever you have an MVP or a prototype, most probably you have some business model or business plan already. But this is what we are improving during the, during the, the bootcamp series. After the bootcamp series and, of course, spending the money, uh, we have a second stage in the program. Uh, we are asking you to create your business plan, but it's a business plan light, so seven pages all together. If you already have your business plan, you need to copy and paste it, a little bit customize it. But uh, by these business plans, we are having a second round evaluation, meaning that from the 15 teams, the best then is going to the final stage of the program. The final stage of the program is a pitching contest. But it's an important uh, part here to mention that we are organizing these pitching uh, contests as part of a bigger event. Uh, recently, in the last two years, uh, we organized our pitching contest as part of BioEurope. BioEurope is one of the biggest uh, European biotech, medtech, and digital health fair with thousands of participants coming from all over the world, investors, industrial players, everybody's there. Of course, again, now in online at this year, but hopefully sooner or later again, in a personal presence. Uh, the reason why we are doing this, because of course you will pitch in front of our jury, uh, but it's important that we are asking hundreds of people, inviting them to come to our satellite events so they can listen to your pitches. And again, proper negotiations can be started. And again, up onto our experience, really nice success story has been born this way. But as a normal, let's say, pitching contest, of course, there are prizes as well. So uh, whoever is winning uh, from the 10 teams uh, is getting further 25,000 euros. This is price. It's important to distinguish here. So you don't need to make any type of reporting about the 25,000 euros. So in total, uh, the winner of Final Stars Awards is receiving 50,000 euros from us. The second is getting 15 and the third is getting 10,000 euros. Again, prices don't need to report it. So this is what InnoStars Awards is offering for you. Application is already open as well as Jumpstarter. Uh, so you can, uh, you can start to apply if you're interested in. Uh, this will be last till 27th of March. So a little bit more than one month, actually one and a half months uh, you still have. Uh, I personally manage this program. So if you have any questions regarding InnoStars Awards, you can turn to me directly. And again, I'm more than happy to answer for it. Startups with Pharma. Uh, so this is, uh, I mentioned to you that, for instance, we are uh, uh, creating challenges together with pharmaceutical companies and then startups, whoever uh, is relevant from the challenges uh, point of view can apply to the program. 
This is Tara Smith Pharma, actually. So this, the biggest uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies on board, uh, we are developing challenges together and each and every year startups can come. Uh, of course, uh, there are training parts wherever besides regulation and also uh, live interactions with, with pharmaceutical companies are happening. But I believe that besides the training and the 6,000 euros, what the program is offering for mentoring, the most important part here is is that whoever is uh, is actually in co-developing the challenges is working together with a startup. So there is a live connection during the program between the startup and the pharmaceutical company. And each and every year we have startups who is finishing the program, is progressing further uh, in a contractual way by, with, with some of the pharmaceutical companies, not everybody, but some of them has a contract with the pharmaceutical companies and they are continuing the, the cooperation. So I believe, and this is what the experience is showing us, uh, that the most important asset here is a life connection with pharmaceutical decision makers. It takes years, most probably some of you already know that it takes years uh, to reach out the right decision maker in a pharmaceutical company or a healthcare provider. We can save this time. We can actually give you the opportunity to talk with the right people on a specific company. So this is uh, Stardust Smith Pharma. Also the application phase is open. Uh, so you can see here that 16th of March deadline as well as Jumpstart jump ahead. Uh, and my colleague Barbara Costa is, uh, is responsible for the program. So again, if you have questions, turn to me or turn to Barbara directly. Next one. This is one of our actually top-notch program in our pro portfolio. It's European Health Catapult. This is definitely for scale-ups and scale-outs. So, sorry guys, I'm just moving back. I didn't mention here that Startups Meet Pharma has the same maturity level from eligibility point of view, what Innostars Awards had. So we are looking for startups with MVPs and prototypes and uh, incorporated company here. Uh, you don't need to have revenue. You don't need to have market presence, just the MVP prototype and the registered company. But here there is a big jump because European Health Catapult is looking for scale ups and scale outs. Actually, uh, the eligibility criteria here is that you need, you need to have half a million euro revenue at the previous year. So if you're talking about this year, of course, it's meaning 2022, uh, 2020, sorry. So 2020, if you had half a million revenue and it doesn't matter if it's sales revenue or funded uh, revenue, let's call this way. So if you received funding or if you received investment in a half a million or maybe a higher value, of course it counts. So it can be a combination of these two. At the end of the day, it's, it's the most important that you need to have the half a million revenue. This program is all about recognition. Our HQ is organizing this program. Uh, many, many stages uh, in Europe, uh, digitally or personally, uh, is established uh, for this program in front of big industrial players, investors. So it's all about the recognition and the awareness raising uh, for the certain startups. Besides that, the startups are receiving 50,000 euros. Uh, it can be spent uh, on project development, but again, I believe the most important and not just belief, it's not just belief question, but actually the experience shows us uh, that by the huge media coverage and the industrial player, let's say, awareness raising, uh, startups are receiving more and more, not just money, but actually business success at the end of the day by European Health Catapult. Uh, this program also opened its application phase. Uh, deadline is 16th of March. Uh, again, questions come to me, but also directly to my colleague. She's responsible on our court to uh, to uh, manage the startups from InnoStars region. She's in Ashmatias, uh, and you can find her email address also in my presentation. And the last program I brought you today is European Bridgehead program. Bridgehead actually has two divisions. I mostly talk about the European branch, but it has a global leg as well. So we have Bridgehead Europe and Bridgehead Global. Uh, this is a soft landing program, if you narrow the line. Uh, it's meaning that we are searching for startups who has a local presence in a certain country. Uh, we don't have any type of revenue limit. So if you're already uh, in a certain market, you started your operation, you have some sales revenue, but you started to think about where to move on, where to extend your uh, operation to, then Bridgehead can help you. Bridgehead structure looks like that we have catalysator partners all over Europe. Catalysators are actually accelerators with live, uh, live business connection in a certain area. 
uh, these partners are actually obliged uh, as part of the uh, program to introduce you to a certain market. So if you're applying to a program and for instance, selecting Spain, because you think that Spanish market can be fruitful for you, then our Spanish market uh, is actually entitled to, uh, to introduce you to the market in the good old times, whenever we can travel, hopefully it will come again. But in the good old times, they also gave you uh, six weeks uh, co-working office space in their in their offices. So actually, you can be present at, for instance, Barcelona. You can work from Barcelona while they are organizing interviews for you with certain industrial players, investors, regulation uh, entities, etc. So actually, they you can you can get the experience and knowledge about how to start operation, for instance, in Spain. That's all about what Bridgehead can bring you uh, to your table. Again, this is about European and global expansion as well. So if you are applying to Bridgehead Europe, of course, you can select European locations. But if you are going to the global one, you can also select the selection. You can select the, the, from the list of uh, China, Japan, uh, South Korea, uh, actually, uh, we have U.S. and Canada uh, in the list. So these are the countries you can you can hit uh, by this program. Uh, this program will also open its application in days. Uh, so this will happen really soon. It didn't do so far, but uh, but. Uh, the application period will last until the end of March. So similarly to Innostars Awards, 27th of March. If you have questions, again, please turn to me or directly to my colleague, Laia Pascal. You can also find her email address in my presentation. And if I just mentioned to you so many times that you can come to me uh, with your questions, here are my, uh, here is my email address. And also I would like to uh, raise your awareness on this site. So of course we have EIP has that EU, our main page, but we created a startup specific site where actually uh, accelerator specific information can be reached out really easily. Uh, you can also have a smart engine. So actually you can type uh, or select your attributes what are you looking for? What is your maturity level, et cetera, et cetera. And then the system shows you what are other opportunities available in our portfolio? Because it's important again to highlight that I just shown you five programs, but actually we have 16 different programs, different boot camps. We have special specialized programs. Of course, that there was a reason I brought you these five because we believe that these are the most influential programs in our portfolio. But it does not mean that maybe you have a different uh, need and maybe another program can fulfill it. So if you didn't find something in these five programs and you, you have a different need, I would highly encourage you to come to this site or turn to me directly and let's talk about what other opportunities we have because uh, I'm pretty much uh, uh, convinced that all of our, all of the needs you can have, we can we can find something. So this is why we have this so much programs actually in our portfolio. So guys, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. I hope I didn't boil too much information on you. Uh, just really quickly, I can talk a lot, I know. Uh, but if you have any questions instantly, please raise it now. If you do not have it right now, uh, of course you can anytime contact me. I'm just checking the chat maybe. I received a question, let's see. Oh, okay. And my colleague says, no, we didn't have any. Okay, I hope I wasn't too boring. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but again, guys, this, this, there is no push on this. So uh, if you are interested in our programs, if you have any questions, just let me know, try to, uh, or reach me out uh, via my email address or LinkedIn, and we can have a quick talk. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Bye.